everyone. It's Thursday, 25th of May, and I've overlaid by about an hour and a half. But check this out. Woke up to these surrounding the vans. Right, quick bro, it's time to get a move on. And I'll explain why when we're on his way. But we've got a lot of miles ahead of us. So I'm gonna have my brew with these guys. Not the vanners, the coos. And then I'll uh, be on my way and I'll explain what's happening today. I've just had to shut the door on these pair. It's getting right close. In fact, they were that cheeky, I think they'd have even stepped in. Now I've got this one giving it big licks. Its head was right against the window about five seconds ago. I weren't recording. So let me explain what's actually happened here. As you've seen in part one, I came up on Sunday. But on Sunday, I was originally meant to go all the way to Inverness, set off in the morning and get up to Inverness tea time early evening to then start the North Coast 500 early-ish on Monday, which would have got me all the way up to John O'Groats. So what's actually happened is it's put me behind and it's given me a longer day today of driving, but a real short one for the last day. Now, I could try the site at Shield Egg, which is where I'm going to today, and see if they could have put me up tomorrow. But with tomorrow being the start of a bank holiday weekend, I don't think they're accepting anybody less than two nights, probably three nights. And also, it'll probably be booked up because all the sites up here are booked as it is anyway. I've not had loads of recording, to be honest with you. Looking at it, it looks quite dull again, but it's not. Don't know why it is, but it's making it look like it on camera. But we're on the A894. And last time I did the North Coast 500, I posted on my Instagram and Facebook that this A894 is the greatest road I've ever driven on. Now bear in mind, I've been everywhere in the UK from various courier jobs, long distance driving. But yeah, I thought, I thought this road is amazing. We've already passed some real nice locks and mountains quite close to the roadside. Try and include a few more clips as we carry on. Scary campsite, just coming into the place now. Fish and chips. I probably should have headed down here last night. Just got me half an hour further down the road. Half an hour is not much though, is it? Neither here nor there. And I'm glad I stayed at Old Shore Moor. I really like that place. There don't seem to be loads of traffic about today. I'm seeing the odd car every every five minutes or so coming the opposite way. There's nothing behind me. Pretty, uh, pretty quiet. I've made a mistake coming in here. Look how tight it is. Christ. Let me spin this round and I'll show you. Managed to turn it round. I can turn my van round anyway. <laughs> you watch, get stuck again somewhere soon. Right, let me just come round here. This is an area called Bad Call. B A D C A double L. We've got loads. 
loads of these little islands just sticking out in the ocean. We're not far from Karlskoe Bridge, which is where we're going to be heading to next. It's a bit choppy out there. Years yesterday. So I've just pulled in at this viewpoint. We're about three miles north of Kyleskew Bridge, which I'll be pulling in at to get a few shots there. The sun's trying to come out. It's quite often the case in Scotland, in the mornings it can be cloudy, then by about dinner time brightens up and you can get some blue skies. I've done pretty well with the weather so far. This is my fourth day. Not had any rain at all. I've not done too much recording as we're coming down because with the sun being in the south, southwest at this time of day, it just makes it look too dull looking back into the camera, if that makes sense. It's like when you take a photo, you do it with the sun, behind the camera. Right, so we're just coming into Kyle Skew Bridge. Wondering how busy this place could be. So I've managed to get a few shots of Kyle Skew Bridge and that family of deer. Just gonna take you down into Kyle Skew Village and I'm gonna make a cup of tea for a change and make some dinner and then we'll be pushing on further down the coast so I'll just take you through the village in a sec and what was it I was saying not long ago blue skies coming out it's bang on midday just coming into Kyle Skew village now a cattle grid. I've lost count how many I've gone over. I'll just show you down here where the slipway is, where they used to get across on the boats before the bridge was built. I think the bridge was built mid 80s. That's actually it, that's where you used to get the ferry across. Or little boat, should I say, probably not a ferry. I'm gonna spin round now and get parked back up where I've just left you, make a cup of tea and have some food. So I'll catch up with you further down on the journey. In fact, I'm gonna pull in where this motorhome is, because this don't look a bad spot to cook me dinner with the views of the mountains. Not a bad spot for a place to have your lunch, is it? Kyle Skew, in northwest Sutherland. So I'm carrying on with my journey now. I'm gonna show you an optional extra of the NC500 that you can take in. Now I'm not doing it this time because I need to be going down to where I'm staying tonight and the best part of the NC500 for me is after Ullapool down over to Gearlock around that coastway but I'm going to show you the optional extra it's called the Wee Mad Road and I'll explain a bit about it when I'm just parked up near it so I've parked up at just where you start the Wee Mad Road like I said it's an optional extra you can go to lock in the Vi that way. I'm just gonna spin you around because it's easier for me showing you. So we've come from along there, Kyle Scoot Bridge is just round a couple of miles down that way. Yeah, two miles says it there. I'm gonna be carrying on down there. But this wee mad road goes over there all the way round. You come round to Clash Nessie and eventually 
interlock inver. But yeah, it's a, a bit of a sketchy road like. Real narrow, real tight, cliff edge drops. But yeah, I just wanted to pull in just to show you this is where you turn off for the Wee Mad Road. It's actually about an hour, hour and 15 minutes all the way around to Loch Inver going that way, even though it's only 23 miles, you're not going no quicker than 30 at all on these roads. You don't want to be either. It is far too dangerous to be going quick. I think there's somebody just going by now to sample the Mad Wee Road. Good luck to you, pal. Right, so we're going to carry on with his journey now. Down the A894, one of my favourite roads. And I'll catch up with you at the next destination. So I've come off the A894 now. Just going to stretch my legs around Ardwreck Castle. We actually came here last year on our family holiday. And that massive lock there is called Lock Ascent. Because we're in the Ascent area of Sutherland. I had planned to pull in at a place called the Wailing Widow, which was uh, about six miles further back up the road. But there was nowhere to park, every space taken. So I thought, I'd take you across to our track. Quite a nice area. Getting pretty breezy again though. Ardwreck Castle. The castle ruin by the lock. I don't think you can get more Scottish than that, can you? A castle ruin by a massive lock. Do you know what? I don't even know if this is two separate locks, just with that little bit of sand area separating the two. So we're just coming down towards Ardmere Point. We stayed at the site here last year. Then Ullapool is just down the road from it. This is Ardmere Point. That's the site we stayed at last year. It was on our family holiday. So we're just coming down into Ullapool now. I'm not going to be staying here long, I'm just going to put some fuel in because I've just got five bars left so I want to keep it above half as I mentioned on the other video. It's a nice town, village, a few pubs, places to eat, there's a campsite. I don't think it takes pre-booking though, the campsite, I think you just have to turn up because they know how busy it gets all, all year round. And they end up with people, like the guy I was talking to at Dunnit, said you get people that book on, they've already paid, but then they find somewhere else they want to off-grid for the night, and then they don't bother turning up. Well, he said, he's not bothered. He's already been paid for it because they book it online. So, yeah, just uh, going to be driving through Ullapool and go to the fuel station. So the sun's come out to play now. 
Yeah, we had a good week here last year. You turn right here for the town, where all the shops and eateries are. They've blocked the road off though, because they're doing some road works, something to the pavement by the looks of it. So I'm just gonna pull in here, get some fuel. So yeah, that's all the pool. Like I said, they've blocked the road off. So the businesses are open, you can walk down it, but I've got elsewhere to be, so we'll be on his way again. Yeah, nice place this, like it. Actually, I've just pulled in here to get rid of some rubbish in them bins that I forgot to take out at that jet garage. I'm just going to show you a better view of Hullapool. And there it is. You can catch various ferries to various islands from there. Like I said, nice place. The smiles come out to play. I've had a bit of a result here. The campsite's been in touch with me. There's no rush to get down to them, which is good. They've sent me the code for the showers and they're gonna leave me my pitch number on the notice board. And the other result I've had is free parking at Corrie Shalig Gorge. I'm just going to turn you around just so I can show you a few more bits. Yeah, so I'm here at Corrie Shallot Gorge. This was where I was going to stay yesterday, if I had come a bit further down. Is that lay by? But I don't think there's any restrictions in the car park either. They're just making some food. I'm just going to go out and check out this gorge for you. Check the van's locked. We'll be on his way. When we came here last year, this was completely full. They've actually got a new car park at the end, which when I leave, I'm going to nip up and show you. It's only a minute back up the road. Right swanky new thing. It's got like a calf, looks like a bit of an alpine resort type place. Right, I'm going to take you out to this viewpoint, Corrie Shallot Gorge. Actually, before I do head on, I'm going to go that way because that's only a 10 minute walk to the platform. Last year, we walked around that way. It's about a 25, 30 minute walk. It just takes you through the forest and that. So I'm going to explain to you what happened with this campsite. Basically last year we was meant to be coming up to Shield Day for our family holiday but because the um, the dates got mixed up we had to cancel it but I'd already sent them the deposit so I'd emailed them and they said they could either refund it me or just keep it as credit. I thought so it's a good excuse to come back up to Scotland. So I let them keep it, we're only 20 quid. So anyway, at the start of this trip, I um, emailed them on the Friday and told them that I would be coming up on the Sunday as the original plan was travel to Inverness on Sunday, start the NC500 on Monday, and then be round to them by Thursday. But because I didn't leave till Sunday evening, it was about 10 o'clock I got to Scotch Corner. So Monday, I didn't get to Inverness till about four o'clock. And as you've seen on the first day, I stayed at Skelbo. So it kind of put me behind a bit. But what's actually happened is, I feel like I'm rushing slightly down this west coast, whereas I could have been having a night down here yesterday. But it's worked out all all right. I've gone to where I've wanted to show you. So uh, pretty happy with that. And like I said, I've got no rush to be at the campsite now. So it's happy days. 
Yeah, it's had a right revamp, this place has. New paths, new gates. Still got the same old cracking waterfalls. Right, let's get round to this viewpoint. We're not quite there yet, but there's one or two of them around here, these waterfalls. When I say it's changed, it has changed. I've walked along this path and ended up at the car park I'm gonna be showing you when we leave here. Just spoke to one of the guys who works here. There's a turn off for it now. Don't to worry, just means I've stretched my legs out a little bit more. So I've come from down there. The gate is literally a minute up by. I've got to here. And I've gone up there. When I should have gone this way. Not to worry, we're only five minutes each way. And that where I ended up isn't the big walk that we did last year. That carries on right down there and loops around. But I'm gonna get over this suspension bridge. It's got a sign on it. Maximum six people at a time. I was actually waiting last year to go across this. Some gorge though. There's the viewing platform. So I'll see you on that. Right, so I'm here. Just about to go onto this viewing platform. shallow waterfall it's a good way down to that bottom so I've just got back to the van just popping back down this road for a minute not even that just to show you that new car park and it's calf to be honest with you, it might not be of any interest to anybody, but somebody who might have been up here recently, or last year and not seen it, might want to, so I'll just quickly show it you. I can turn back round and then start heading back along the coast. Right, here it is. Right new swanky thing. This is it. Looks pretty decent, doesn't it? But pretty decent, also looks pretty pricey as well. And I've got a load of food in the back. So we'll be on his way around the coast. This next 75 mile, well, it's 79 to the campsite, so it's about 70 before we get to Torridon. This next 70 mile is one of my favorite parts of the whole of the NC 500. I've had the tunes blaring and it's just me and the open road. I turn it off when the comes to talking because YouTube has a bit of a mardi about the songs. It muted one of my clips I did at Forest because there was some song being played and it weren't even any of the songs that we all sing and dance to in the stands. 
but yeah, I'm fully loving it. On the open road, blue skies in the northwest of Scotland. This is what I mean, you get long stretches like this. There's nothing behind me. There's a lorry heading towards me. Not seeing much traffic. It's 10 to three. driving all the way around in one hit obviously I'm stopping off in fact I'm having an hour here or at least three quarters of an hour this is one of my most favorite places I've ever been little log broom I ain't a clue why it's called little because it goes all the way down there for miles In fact, I like it that much. I think I could have been here a long time for an holiday and just staying in this area. This is the thing when you're doing the North Coast 500. Unless you're spending like 10 days or two weeks up here, which is great, don't get me wrong, I do love that, but at the same time, I also like certain areas just to stay out and explore. So what I think I'm gonna do in future, next time I come up this way, I'm just gonna pick an area and stay out, which is pretty much what we did last year. We went to Ardmere near Ullapool and explored that area, a good 40 mile radius of that. Next time I come up to Scotland, I reckon this is the area I'm coming to. Love it. about to enter Gearlock now. I tell you what, that was a spectacular drive from Little Lock Broom to here. Amazing. Loved every second of that. I'd go back and do it again. The, um, the only problem I've had, yeah, sorry. The only problem I've had is because the sun is south and I'm driving towards it, I've struggled to get my because you just, you're just facing into the sun and you're not seeing things very good but trust me it was an amazing drive loved it so right let's head down into gearlock now from higher up back there the sea looked turquoise so yeah just gonna ride in and out of here not particularly after anything from Gearlock, over there nipping in that shop. And it's a nationwide branch of a store, which I'm not gonna mention. No real reason, just if it was a local store, I'd have mentioned them. I think I prefer local community stores than these big wigs taking over everywhere. I've actually turned round now and I did go further along, but I'd cut the recording off. Uh, yeah, it's not a co-op. I don't mind co-op, and that's not just because I used to work at the co-op, but it's, uh, it's another one. So less said about them, the better. Co-op's all right, they do a lot for the community. I don't just say that because I work for them, because I've worked for places before that I don't like, that I wouldn't recommend, but yeah, co-op is a bit dearer. But they pay all the staff well as well. Well, reasonably well, should I say. We'd all like a bit more, wouldn't we? I'm gonna behave, but that is really tempting me. And when I mean behave, I mean be good. Because I could just eat a Chinese, but I've got plenty of food with me, so I'll have to resist temptation. Right, snipping in this shop. 
Well, that was a short but sweet visit to Gaylock. Quite a nice place. But I had my me time at Little Lock Broom. I want to get down to this site before seven o'clock because the evening will just go like that. I want to grab a shower, cook up a feed. Just have a bit of a relaxing time now at the site. It says it's 36 mile away, so we'll start heading down that way. So we're back on single track lanes again, coming away from Gearlock. Hey, I've just realized why it seems so quiet in Gearlock. It's quarter past six now. Been left there about 10 minutes or so. So it was six, gone six when I was there. Everybody's either at the campsites, parked up, or at the bed and breakfasts. So it would be quiet around that time. It was really busy when I went there two years ago. This looks like a new stretch. I think it's needed as well because I've just had to carry over a minute ago for a massive coach. So it looks like they're obviously widening the roads. Yeah, some of these mountains now nah, the most spectacular, some of the most spectacular, should I say, in the whole of the UK, Torrid and Mountain Range. You'll be seeing better than these. These are only little babies that's in front of it. These are some of the big ones around Torridon. Just near Loch Marie. If I can remember where to pull up, I'm gonna show you a little, little bit of Loch Marie. It were only a few weeks ago, all them mountains were covered in snow, the top half of them. Pulled in here at Ben Eag. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm sure somebody will let me know if it's not. All right, let's have a little look through here. Wind's just starting to pick up a little bit. We're on down here on the shore of Loch Marie. I'd pop down, have a little look. Some info here if anybody wants to pause it and read. The northern edge of Benig Nature Reserve, one of the most important areas in this country set aside for nature. This is Britain's oldest national nature reserve, established 1951 and also one of the largest, some 48 square kilometres. I think you can overnight in this car park. There's no signs up, and I'm sure I've seen it on park for night. In fact, I have. Apparently it's a right midgy fest though. Shouldn't be a problem though today. Still quite breezy. They want it real calm and sunny. Then when it's like a little bit muggy later on. Right, let's move on to Torridon now. So I'm just on the edge of Loch Torridon now, 10 minutes from the campsite. It's been a longish day, but enjoyable. I've had plenty of stops as well. I had a good hour up at Little Loch Broom. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna push on now down to the site. Look at the skies. It's been a good day, perfect. The tide's well back at Loch Torridon. Nearly seven o'clock. 
Right, so it's nine o'clock now. I've been here a couple of hours. This is where I'm staying tonight. Shield Egg site. In fact, I'm gonna spin you around and give you a, a little tour. It's typical someone's decided to start streaming at nine o'clock at night, just as I'm about to tell you what's what on here. But yeah, anyway, this is Shield Egg site. It's fully booked. I've managed to get in because we'd sent them the money for it last year when we ended up going to another site. So they honoured me, booking from then the deposit and let me stay, which was good of them. I took a few shots with my drone earlier. I've been advised not to go too high because over there is a six day old eagle and its parents are frantic in and out, in and out, taking it food all the time. So I didn't go too high. Last thing I wanted was to upset them. Last thing I wanted was one of them to grab hold of me drone. All right, sun's just starting to go down slowly, but it'll still be light here till quarter to 11. Right, we're now walk down into the village. This is that guy streaming. Mind you, might be the only time he gets to do it. Busy lives and all that. Just walking down into the village now. There's no end of folk up here taking photos of wildlife. I suppose it's perfect for that if that's what you're into. Someone on my right, good cameras and that. Like the other day, there was that German guy filming them seals. I only knew they were there when he was pointing to them. And then next thing, you couldn't miss them. You know what I mean? The heads were bobbing up and down, but I couldn't get anything on my recording. There's a slight breeze and that's what's keeping any midges away. I've not come across any midges yet. Which, to be honest with you, I thought I might have done. Now I'm on this west coast. Right, so I'm just at the pub now. I'm just going to see what beers they've got. So they've got Guinness. That's what I'll be having. I think this is the first time I've had a Guinness and it's got the shamrock in it. Hopefully it's a good pint. £5.30. Right, well I'm back at the site now. I did want to talk to you about what was happening for the rest of the trip. I was going to do it down at the pub, but there was too many people about and I didn't want to be chatting too much on my own. So, um, yeah. I mentioned it in part one that I wouldn't be finishing at Inverness and here's my reason. I started off at Inverness, I obviously went up the east coast to the top, John O'Groats area, across to Durness, then worked my way back down the west coast. Tomorrow I'm going to be going over to Apple Cross, Bielik Nabar, and then on to Loch Carron. When you're at Loch Carron, You've got a choice to make. Do you carry on slightly north, east, back up to Inverness? Or, as I'm going to do, head south, down to Eileen, Donning Castle, cut through Glengarry, across to Loch Ness, and then down towards Fort William. I'm not going to go about 60 miles north east back up towards Inverness to then come back down to more or less the same starting point or should I say finishing point just to carry it on so I've also done that bit, bit before it's all right it's all part of the north coast 500 but it's not a good bit I'll be brutally honest with you loads of people miss it out and for me if I was planning the North Coast 500, it is only a rough guide, and remember, at the end of the day, nothing's set in stone. I would then extend the North Coast 500 for it to have carried on down the coast, down to Plockton, and down to Eileen Donning Castle, 
and finished it around that area because you could start it at Eileen Donning Castle if you went up clockwise and all the way up to the top and then across to John O'Groats and then down the east coast or as it is now you could start at Inverness up to John O'Groats across to Durness work your way down the west coast and finish at Eileen Donning Castle it's no big deal so that's where I'll be finishing it tomorrow at Eileen Donning Castle for me plus I love that road from Loch Carron down to Eileen Donnan. So I just thought I'd let you know that's what's happening in the next episode. So yeah, thanks again for watching. And I'm going to start doing some editing. Oh, and if you don't mind, start leaving me some comments on the videos because it will really help with the views. So thanks a lot. Cheers.